Intro. Hi everyone, and welcome to another marvelous video. Even before movies like Spider-Man or Iron Man took the center stage, the X-Men franchise has been consistent in upholding live-action incarnations of Marvel characters. However, even before Tom DeSanto and Bryan Singer's X-Men, there was the 1996 movie, Generation X, based on the Marvel comic book of the same name. In the first release of the first issue of the comic books, the storyline was revealed to be a part of the Phalanx Covenant. It consisted of young mutants who were taken to Massachusetts Academy. Instead of Xavier Institute in New York, the young mutants were trained by Banshee and Emma Frost. With slight deviations, the movie, which was previously planned to be a TV series, developed a similar plot. Sometime later, this version of reality was designated to be from Earth 700029. In today's video, we will be discussing the X-Men characters that were shown in the Generation X movie. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. One, Emma Frost. We are all familiar with Emma Frost, who made her first comic book appearance in X-Men issue 129, and this was her first live action portrayal. Played by actress Fanola Hughes, Emma Frost was the headmaster of Xavier's school for gifted youngsters. Generation X revolved around a world hostile to mutants. Any unregistered mutant would be taken into mutant concentration camps, where they would be introduced to various means of torturing. While authorities sought to capture mutants, Emma Frost, along with Banshee, sheltered them and educated them about ways to control their powers. In the movie, when Jubilee was detained, Emma and Banshee arrived at the police lockup to free the young mutant. She used her powers of hallucinesis to appear as mutant handling agents tasked to take the mutant to the concentration camp. Soon, Jubilee was free and taken to Xavier Institute. Emma was rather a strict headmistress, not entertaining any nonsense from her students. However, she was supportive, and in the final battle, she worked with her students to defeat the villain, Russell Tresh. The powers and abilities of Emma Frost from the Generation X movie were quite similar to the ones we are familiar with. Along with telepathy and telekinesis, she could generate powerful illusions. In the film, she could also create a doorway between the real and dream world. Two, Jubilee. Next, we have Jubilee, a young mutant capable of greeting fire blasts. In the comics, she was introduced in 1989's Uncanny X-Men issue 244, and Generation X was also her first live-action appearance. Played by Heather McComb, Jubilee was introduced as a young teenager playing video games in a video arcade. When Russell Tresh began tampering with her mind, being compelled to play games incessantly, she soon attracted unwanted attention from the guards. Now, Jubilee was a level 3 mutant and all the stress, anxiety, and fear caused her mutant powers to manifest, causing a huge ruckus. Soon, she was handed over to the police and kept in lockup for not being a registered mutant. Her mother pleaded to the officers, stating how it was the first time they found out about her mutant abilities, and there had been no such instances before, but it was futile. Fortunately, Emma and Banshee arrived to rescue her before the authorities took her to mutant concentration camps. Jubilee was next taken to the Xavier School, where she found more young teenagers like her. After an initial phase of bullying, she was befriended by everyone, with Angelo being her best friend. The two of them discovered the Dream Machine in their residential mansion and intended to use it for their purposes. Jubilee wanted to see what her parents felt about her, during which time she was haunted by Russell Trash. Jubilee quickly snapped out of the Dream World, and later, when Angelo was trapped in it, she was the one who informed the rest to save her friend. Three, Sean Cassidy. Slash Banshee. In Generation X, Sean Cassidy, aka Banshee, was the co headmaster of Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters. As the plot proceeded, Banshee was there with Emma Frost while rescuing Jubilee from being sent to mutant concentration camps. Played by Jeremy Ratchford, Banshee was classified as a level 3 mutant, capable of generating and manipulating sound waves from his vocal cords. After taking the admission of Angelo and Jubilee, when they engaged in chaos with the other students, one short scream was enough for Banshee to stop them unlike Emma. Banshee was softer to the students and motivated them consistently. From the day of their joining to the final confrontation with Russell Trash, soon stood beside his students and helped them take down the hideous Trash. Although there was not much of his power display except for Sonic Scream, Banshee had a lot to offer in a battle. His acoustic kinesis could not only generate power sound waves, but also do a bunch of numerous attacks. He used his screams to fly, create a shield, or even a sonar. With the ability to manipulate sound waves, Sean could disorient his enemies by affecting their equilibrium using his sonic scream as well as render them unconscious.
Four, Angelo Espinosa slash skin. Played by Augustin Rodriguez, Angelo Espinosa, a.k.a. The Skin, was showcased as one of the newest admissions to the Xavier School for the Gifted, along with Jubilee. Unlike all the ruckus faced by Jubilee, Angelo was sent to the school by his parents. Similar to the comics, Angelo's mutant genes gave him the capability to stretch his skin and limbs. It's quite like Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four. He was also showcased as a genius with computer software and encrypting codes, following his training with the other students. Angela was the one who hacked the systems to find the dream machine. Once he transcended into the dream world, he tracked to find his crush, during which he met Russell Trash. Angelo proved to be rather gullible to Trash, who used him to rescue his unconscious body from the asylum and gain back his former self. Trash rewarded Angelo by restraining him, seeking to take away his brain. However, before it could happen, Jubilee, along with the rest of Generation X, arrived to save Skin. At the end of the final battle, Skin showcased his powers as well as his bravery. Wrapping Trash with his stretched limbs, he jumped into limbo to put an end to the villain along with himself. Fortunately, with the aid of a stretched limb, he managed to bring himself up and not die. The character of Angelo was originally created by Scott Lobdell and Chris Bacalo and introduced to the world of comics in 1994's Uncanny X-Men issue 317. Special kids from Juvie School. Welcome to Hastings, pube head. Hi, Mondo. Mondo was a mutant with the ability to take the properties of any inorganic or organic matter he touched. In the film, the character was played by Bumper Robinson and showcased as a hot-headed student at Xavier's Institute, getting into fights easily. While in a carnival, when a group of students bullied Angelo, Mondo took the properties of a rock by touching it and faced the bullies following, which when the bully struck him, he broke his hand. Soon, the rest of them engaged in a fight, resulting in utter chaos. The students were later brought back to the Institute, with Emma Frost making a decision to expel Mondo. However, Angelo, along with the rest, stood up for Mondo, which ultimately compelled Emma to take back her decision. In the comics, Mondo was introduced in Scott Lobdell's Generation X, Issue 3, released in November 1994, with a much darker story. Black Tom Cassidy, the cousin and rival of Sean Cassidy, created a clone of Mondo to infiltrate Generation X. Hence, the Mondo in Generation X was the clone, while the real one was kidnapped. However, none of it was shown or referred to in the movie, and we can only hope for such a plot to be introduced in live action. I'm just gonna get my Barry White album. <laughs> 6. Monet St. Croix, slash M, played by Amarillis Monet St. Croix, aka M, was yet another student of Xavier's Institute, who probably had the least screen time in the movie. She possessed superhuman strength, superhuman intelligence, and a badass attitude. The way she introduced herself to Jubilee spoke volumes about her superiority complex, and she does live up to it, from punching and destroying the ball for the strength test, with just a single casual punch to throwing Tresh against the wall. Her strength is quite astonishing. However, there was not much scope to speak of her intelligence in the movie. There has been no information about Monet in the movie, but her comic book origins do speak up for her rash attitude. In the comics, Monet St. Croix was the daughter of Ambassador Cartier St. Croix, a Monet Gasque wealthy former president of several corporations, and Jamila St. Croix, a descendant of Algerian royalty. She had an older brother named Marius, and two twin sisters, Claudette and Nicole. So, Russell Trash. Next, we have the main antagonist of the movie, Russell Trash, who had no comic book counterpart. It can be inferred that Russell Trash was a character of Earth 700029. As the movie begins, Dr. Russell Tresh was shown to be one of the scientists working with Emma Frost on a mutant research project under the United States government, until his malevolent motives were revealed. It all happened in the movie's first few minutes, and he was soon suspended from the project. Russell's specialization was in brain functioning, the subconscious, and dream manipulation. And as the movie progressed, Russell revealed to have acquired all requisite information about Emma's dream machine. After being fired for his evil doings, Russell was eventually recruited for research and development by Robert Ralston, the board member of an advertising company. It was soon revealed that Russell was a megalomaniac looking for ways of exacting revenge on a girl who had once deceived him. Eventually, when Ralston and the rest of the board members discarded Russell's dream machine concept, he used the device to enter Ralston's dream and got him to jump off his building. However, the board soon informed Russell's plans to the authorities, who caught him off guard while he was using the machine and arrested him. All of this happened when Russell was in the dream realm, and hence, when they disconnected him, his consciousness was trapped in the dream world. During this period, he met Angelo, who was also in the dream world and convinced him to rescue his body 
and get him connected to the device to get his consciousness back. The plan worked, but Angelo was double-crossed and as Russell was about to vivisect his brains, all the members of the Generation X arrived. Now, Russell was a normal human being, but his repeated visits to the dream realm gave him psychic control over the dream dimension. After a long fight, Russell is defeated, and his consciousness is trapped in the dream world for eternity. 8. Arlie Hicks slash Buff Arlie Hicks, aka The Buff, was also one of the original characters from the movie. Played by Suzanne Davis, Arlie was a friendly girl but extremely introverted. She possessed enhanced muscle structure, which was the main source of her insecurity. Arlie refrained from revealing her physique and wore fully covered clothes to avoid criticism. However, she eventually developed a mutual attraction for Refrax. During the final battle, she assisted other members of Generation X to rescue Skin from the Dream Dimension. 9. Kurt Pistorius slash Refrax Last but not least, we have Kurt Pistorius aka Refrax, who was yet again an original character created for the movie. Kurt was a mutant student at Xavier's Institute and possessed the ability to project energy beams from his eyes. Towards the end of the movie, he also gained the ability to see through solid objects. Kurt was more of a class clown and Mondo's best friend. From passing comments in class to mocking newcomers, Kurt had all the skills to irritate his fellow students and teachers. However, he does have a sense of responsibility for his actions, and it can be observed that he was cautious about his actions and repercussions. He was there during the final battle against Tresh in the Dream Dimension. Marvelous verdict. So we have finally come to the end of the video, and we hope you have liked our content. Generation X might seem goofy to the present day audience, but back in 1996, it was a decent effort to establish the idea of mutants in live action movies. Imagining a remake is no harm, and watching Banshee mentor young mutants is certainly something new viewers can watch if remade. Thank you for watching the video till the end, and stay tuned for the next marvelous video. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks everyone.